News 25 is brought to you by J.K. Nelson Law. Call 727-9900 today for your free consultation. If you need a lawyer, you need Nelson. NASCAR fans remain concerned but hopeful following a crash. And a disabled vehicle blocks several travel lanes. News 25 starts now. This is News 25 with Unette Gentry. News 25. Local coverage you can count on. A NASCAR driver is injured in a dramatic crash. It's Tuesday, February 18th. I'm Unette Gentry. Well, racing fans are in shock following Monday night's horrific crash at the Daytona 500. Michael Donahue gives us those latest details. To every race fan's dismay, Sunday's Daytona 500 was plagued by storms and the Great American Race was moved to primetime Monday evening. Everyone was ready for a great race, but nobody was prepared to witness a near tragedy. As Denny Hamlin took the checkered flag on his third Daytona 500 victory, disaster struck behind him. Ryan Newman was turned into the wall, setting his car upside down. Mid-flip, Newman was then hit again in the driver's side window, sending the car back into the air. He landed on his roof, briefly catching fire before coming to a stop. Medical crews tended to Newman's car, cutting him out and rushing him to Halifax Medical Center by ground ambulance. Hours later, NASCAR Steve O'Donnell addressed the media with the following statement. Ryan Newman is being treated at Halifax Medical Center. He is in serious condition, but doctors have indicated his injuries are not life-threatening. We appreciate your thoughts and prayers and ask that you respect the privacy of Ryan and his family during this time. An update released this morning indicates that Ryan Newman is awake and communicating with family and doctors. Relieved that his injuries are not life-threatening, we wish the Rocket Man Ryan Newman a speedy recovery. This has been your sports update. I'm Michael Donahue with News 25. And thanks so much, Michael. You're not only a weather expert, but a racing expert as well. Well, in other local news, a Tonopah man is under arrest facing two felony charges after he reportedly shot at another man's vehicle. 28-year-old Austin O'Hara has been booked into the Nye County Detention Center on charges of discharging a firearm at or into a structure or vehicle and assault with a deadly weapon. Deputies located O'Hara and arrested him February 13th, five days after they identified him as a suspect in the reported shooting. February 8th, the victim told police he was visiting a friend who lived on the same property as O'Hara. He went on to say as he got out of his vehicle, he noticed O'Hara standing on his porch with a gun in his hand. The victim questioned him about the gun, then says O'Hara raised his arm as if he was getting ready to shoot. The victim jumped back in his vehicle and took off. He told investigators he then heard what sounded like a gunshot. Soon after, the rear driver's side tire on his vehicle began to go flat. In the police report, the victim says O'Hara began chasing him in a pickup and only stopped when he realized the victim was heading toward a patrol vehicle. Deputies searched O'Hara's home immediately after the incident, but were unable to locate him at the time. And traffic was diverted around a disabled vehicle on the highway today. Nye County Sheriff's Office deputies directed traffic around a diesel tractor with trailers that was stopped in the right turn lane of East Highway 372 heading onto southbound Highway 160. Heavy equipment was brought to the scene by the local Star Nursery to assist the nursery's out-of-town delivery truck. And fortunately, the road was reopened within hours. And Democratic candidate for president Tom Steyer will be right here in Pahrump at the Senior Center tomorrow, Wednesday, February 19th. The door is open at 1.30 and the event begins at 2 p.m. The Pahrump Senior Center is located at 1370 West Basin Avenue inside the Sunset Mobile Home Park. And stay tuned right here to KPVM where we are Pahrump's number one and now Las Vegas' newest news source. You're watching KPVM News 25, local coverage you can count on. 
Welcome back to News 25. Well, fortunately, lots of people are eating less processed food, but that healthy habit is now having an unhealthy effect on the bottom line of a major American food company. Angela Miles explains that and more in today's financial news. Here's Angela Miles with today's Business First Brief. Tapping our news, the Super Tuesday primary election is now just a couple of weeks away. President Trump heads to California Wednesday for a fundraising event at the estate of Oracle's chairman, Larry Ellison. Supporters will pay $100,000 for a golf outing and a photo with the president. Tesla is surprising Wall Street by offering more stock. The electric company will make $2 billion in shares available to the public. The Kraft Company is dealing with a noticeable change in Americans' diets. They are eating less processed food. Kraft food sales are now down for the 14th quarter in a row. A record-breaking number of Americans have a million dollars in their retirement savings. According to Fidelity, 441,000 people have balances of one million. The rising stock market and workers adding more money to their 401k and IRA accounts are among the reasons for the new riches. To find out where you can see us every day, go to businessfirstam.com. Thanks so much, Angela. And you still have time to get involved in some very informative law enforcement classes that are being instructed by officers with the Nye County Sheriff's Department. The Citizens Awareness Academy is going strong. The 55-hour free course open to the public goes over a wide array of aspects of our law enforcement officers and what they encounter daily, including daily tasks, legalities, various crimes, terminology, firearms, and you can even go on a ride along with deputies. The class is held every Saturday at the Nye County Detention Center off Basin Avenue, located at 1521 Siri Lane. Besides being taught the basics from our local law enforcement deputies, residents can ask questions. The class teaches participants what the officers endure and gives a little understanding of community policing. Those interested in attending the Citizens Awareness Academy Academy are asked to meet at the Nye County Detention Center in the lobby to fill out a brief application. For more information, give them a call, 775-751-7014. And a local group is inviting the public to participate in a rally celebrating freedom and liberty that's happening right here in Pahrump this weekend. Organizer Rich Bouchart spoke with News 25 about the nonpartisan celebration. This coming Saturday, that's February 22nd, we're having a pro-Constitution, pro-Bill of Rights, uh, Second Amendment rally and celebration. It'll be uh, out in front of the uh, Pahrump Nugget at the street corner, and that's uh, State Route 160 and 372. And this is gonna be a uh, celebration of our rights, not a protest. This is not a Republican event. This is very much uh, open to everyone. We'd like all patriotic Americans uh -huh. to, <laughs> to um, to attend this, it's going to be a great event. We're expecting a couple hundred people. We have, uh, we'd like you to bring your, your flag and we'd also, uh, we have about 50 uh, signs that we have made and you're welcome to have them first come first serve. Huh? So we, we don't discriminate against political parties. We, this is not a Republican event, I say again. So please come out Saturday, 1130 to 130. Uh, attend this great event. It's going to be a, a lot of fun, so we'd like to see everybody come out. Well, the morning rush can often be hectic, and sometimes we end up skipping breakfast. But there's good reason to make sure that kids especially eat breakfast before heading out the door. Recent research shows that teens who eat breakfast before school perform better academically. Dr. Amy Snyderman of Cleveland Clinic Children's says breakfast fuels a growing brain. The brain is one of the few tissues in the body that needs um, food primarily to fuel it. Um, other organs and muscles can break down fats from the body or break down muscle tissue in more extreme cases and use that as fuel, but the brain cannot. It actually needs food to fuel it. The study looks at British adolescents between the ages of 16 and 18. The teens recorded whether they ate breakfast, how often, and also provided information on their grades. Results show eating breakfast every day 
is associated with better academic performance. Dr. Snyderman says without breakfast, kids of all ages may feel irritable and tired, which can lead to behavior and attention problems. She says when a child's brain has adequate fuel, they're better able to perform and learn. If mornings are busy, she recommends planning a quick, nutritious meal in advance. I suggest, especially the teenagers, to kind of prep it the night before so they can just grab it and go. Um, Hard-boiled eggs are great. Um, even a sandwich, peanut butter sandwich, a deli meat sandwich, um, fruit with some nut butter if they don't have any allergies. Dr. Snyderman says granola bars can be a good breakfast choice as well, as long as they have some protein and are low in sugar. Complete results for the study can be found in the journal Frontiers in Public Health. All right, you'll have another opportunity to help our community with another food drive that's coming up in May. But first, here's a rundown of our recent food drive that was held right here at Walmart. The KPVM-TV Ace Country Radio Food Drive was held at Walmart to benefit the Food for Thought program and the BFW Food Bank. We brought in two full carloads of food and almost $300 in cash for these two organizations that feed children and veterans right here in our area. If you would like to participate next time in our food drive, it will be held in May. We'll keep you posted on the exact date. You can also give us a call at 775-727-9400, extension 201, or email deanna at kpvm25.tv. All right, and don't grab that remote. We'll have some important health news for you right after this break. This segment of the news is brought to you by Mountain West Lawyers, Nye County's injury attorneys. Don't get bullied by insurance companies. Call Jason Ernest and bully them back at 775-727-9500. Welcome back. Well, if you or a loved one has diabetes or prediabetes, there are classes happening right now at Nye Communities Coalition that are free of charge. There is a program to help with diabetes and prediabetes at Nye Communities Coalition. Did you know that one out of three U.S. adults has prediabetes? Most don't know that. Learn the skills you need to lose weight, be more physically active, and manage stress. Connect with a lifestyle coach to guide and encourage you. Gain support from other members who have similar goals. Classes are offered in Pahrump and Tonopah. For more information, you can go to Nye Communities Coalition on Facebook or stop by 1020 East Wilson Road right here in Pahrump. You can also give them a call at 775-727-9970 or email info at nycc.org. Well, if you don't know her, we're introducing you to Leona X. She's in several bands, including a self-titled band named Thigh Voltage and Bad Reputation. And now the Las Vegas singer and guitarist has just finished recording her new single entitled I'm Alive. And there's a release date of March 9th. Leona is talking to us about her new song and video on her website. My greatest passion is songwriting. And through it, I want to spread a message of love, compassion, and equality for all species and for our beautiful planet. This song means more to me than anyone I've ever written. It's everything I imagined and more. The release date will be on March 9th, 2020 during the super full worm moon. That means this song will have been written, recorded, and released under three very powerful super full moons. This song gives hope to all that have loved and lost. And to me personally, is a testament to the incredible power of Mother Nature and the oneness between us and the universe. Leona X is the singer, lead guitarist, and songwriter of her original Las Vegas-based band and continues to grow and evolve as an artist. 
She was voted as Las Vegas' best rock band in the Vegas Rocks Magazine Awards and has been featured in Guitar Player Magazine. Leona's music is emotionally raw and riff heavy, and her live performances have been described as commanding and passionate. She's about to film the official music video for I'm Alive and preparing for live performances this spring. You can learn more about Leona X on her official website, leonaxrocks.com, or through social media, including Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And tonight, we want to wish good luck to the girls' basketball team from Pahrump Valley High School for their championship game. Veronica De La Rosa is telling us about that game and more events affecting students at Pahrump Valley High School. Hi, I'm Veronica De La Rosa, and this is your student news. Balloon Fest is this weekend from Friday through Sunday, the 21st through the 23rd. It will be here at the Pahrump Petrick Park. For the first time ever, there will be hot air balloon rides open to the public, costing $150 per person, and you must be at Petrick Park by 6 a.m. on any of the three days. There will be a carnival, the Pahrump Valley High School Rodeo, a hot air balloon glow Friday through Saturday at 6 p.m., and a car show Saturday morning. For more information, please go to perumpchamber.com. Battling 1000 is a hilarious game between the BFW Post Auxiliary Team and Girls Who Love Softball Team. It's a family-friendly event starting at 11 a.m. this Sunday, February 23rd, here at the Pearl Valley High School softball fields, and it's a dollar to enter. If you're a girl who loves softball and you'd like to try out for the Girls Who Love Softball team, it will be here at Pearl Valley High School this Saturday from 9.30 until noon. The Cinderella Pageant is a scholarship program that's been around for 40 years. It includes free modeling and interview workshops. The last one is this Monday, February 24th from 4 to 5.30 p.m. at the Pahrump Community Library on East Street. For more information, please contact Gwendolyn Hansen at 702-308-4004 or email cinderellanevada at gmail.com. And the official pageant will be February 29th. The Pahrump Valley High School Trojan at Review is next Tuesday, February 25th at 7 p.m. here at the Pahrump Valley High School Main Gym. It's $5 in advance and $7 at the door. Please go and watch the dance team's biggest performance. This has been Veronica De La Rosa with your student news. News 25 Weather Cam is brought to you by Learner and Row Injury Attorney's Office in Pahrump. In a wreck, need a check? Call 702-877-1500. All right, it's time to take a look outside at what conditions were like earlier everywhere from Pahrump Valley High School to Red Rock Mountains and beyond. We'll take a closer look at our forecast right after this break. News 25 weather is brought to you by Dairy Council of Nevada. The splash of cream in your coffee, the dollop of sour cream on your burrito, the melted toasty cheese on your pizza. Undeniably delicious, undeniably dairy. Enjoy what's real. Hello and welcome back to News 25. I'm Michael Donahue with today's weather. In Las Vegas, we had a high of 63 degrees, a low of 43 degrees. Death Valley at 74, the low is 46. 64, 34 in Amargosa. 61, a low of 31 in Beatty. 51 for the high in Goldfield. 49 in Tonopah. And 48 in Fallon. All three towns have a low of 21 degrees. Carson City, the high is 54 degrees. 48 for the high in Fernley. Those two towns have a low of 23 degrees. Now today in Pahrump, we saw mostly sunny skies. Our high today was 63 degrees. Winds coming out of the south at 5 miles per hour. 14% for our humidity and our sunrise at 628 this morning. Now for tonight, we're going to see some mostly clear skies. Our low is going to be 38 degrees. It is 61 outside currently with winds coming out of the east-southeast at 5 miles per hour. 28% for our humidity and our sunset at 528 tonight. Now looking ahead to our 7-day, we're still going to see all those sunny skies. we got some clouds rolling in Friday and Saturday as well as next Tuesday. Now for Saturday, we do have a small chance of rain in the morning, 
but that rain will start to dissipate as the day goes on and we'll just see some cloudy skies. Temperature wise, our high is pretty much staying the same. We're just going to be seeing our highs in that 60 degree bracket, just between 63 and 68 degrees, with the exception of Friday, where we're going to be seeing a high of 70. Now, our overnights are seeing the same story. We're going to be seeing our lows just around 35 to 39 degrees, with the exception of Friday and Sunday, where we're going to be seeing our lows at 40 and 44 degrees. And so now with that, we're going to throw it back to the desk with Deanna and Jeanette. Thanks so much, Michael. And Mercy Air was launched to front site this afternoon for a report of a non-life-threatening gunshot wound to the leg of a 64-year-old male who was transported to a Las Vegas area hospital. There's no further word about his current condition. Well, that does it for this edition of News 25. I'm Unette Gentry. And from all of us here at KPVM and Ace Country Radio, thanks so much for joining us tonight, and we will see you again tomorrow. Good night.